about my backyard. Um, my backyard is a mess, but <laughs> I like it that way. It's the only place, uh, it, uh, you know, I work as a technical writer in an electronics company, and everything is precision, 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 computers, precision, precision. So my backyard is kind of my little fortress uh, or my little corner where I just let neglect take its course as much as my wife will let me. Um, so I have this one little corner where I have an old wood pile that I never use. I just like to let it rot there, you know, and <laughs> get all these nice fragrances and insects in there and everything. Uh, I don't use it because my wife won't let me bring real logs into the house. She says they're too messy, so I have to use these Dura logs, you know, which... <laughs> <coughs> um, it's called The Corner, and, you know, as a poet, uh, I'd like to think that uh, someday I might achieve kind of a combination of William Carlos Williams and uh, Jack Nicholson. So <laughs> kind of keep that in mind. As you this is my spot, this corner of the yard overgrown with weeds near the wood pile and the compost heap. All summer long it smolders with a lyric rot, moldy wood stink I feel at home with, where the cowish slugs graze in the moist decay, and shy colonies of wood lice sleep in eternal peace under a weathered log. A joyful neglect, I make my small defense against the advanced barbarians of precision and order. And here in the afternoon, resting in an old lawn chair after gardening, I am lulled by the bleary, disoriented sun, the green bottleneck flies magnetized on and off the compost heap, the sweet smell of summer sweat under the brim of my pulled-down baseball cap. Also should mention, this poem's not over, but there's a marsh behind my house, a little residue of you know these wonderful swamps and marshes that used to be in New Jersey. There's just enough of it there. And sometimes sitting into the evening, I listen as the marsh begins its froggy music, threatening with its clicks and drones as a hundred million insects rage with biological intensity, the steady racket beckoning me like the old gods back through the 10 foot swaying grasses into the soft body of the marsh to lose myself in the dark fur of night. In winter, too, I sit here, the chair frozen, the fragile sunlight glimmering off the wood pile, quiet under old snow. Sometimes bringing out a cup of warm sake, I watch the pungent steam rise into the clear air and with the first slow sip, give up all thought, surrendering myself to the precise fragrance of the cold, the sun making paradise behind my closed eyes. Or just as it begins to snow, I watch as the flakes fall with a heavy, increasing silence and throw back my head, feeling each tiny wetness like a blessing, a sort of snowy lovemaking as they fall on an open human face, getting caught in my lashes and nose hairs. Tiny benedictions we only receive when we sit in the cold or the heat for its own sake, surrendered at last to bug and weed and weather. And when I'm snow covered, I get up carefully, trying to keep from losing the pure white coat as I walk slowly back to the house, the children at the kitchen window laughing at my approach. <laughs>